I think I discovered the cheat code for drum chops. Or one of the cheat codes. Hear me out. Now when you first started playing, all your fills would be like, booga digga booga digga booga digga booga digga bosh. And everything would kind of end there. Well, it turns out that's not just a problem for total beginners. When we chop around the drums, if we've got toms arranged in the conventional way from high to low, so they get lower in the direction of your strong hand, the low drums exert a kind of gravitational pull. It feels kind of like the spot all fills go to die. Like, just try this simple sweep in 16th notes. Try this, then instead of ending the fill there, try to continue it. What happens? It feels awkward. You want to just continue around the kit like the pros do, but somehow it feels like you keep getting caught on the bottom side of the kit. Like driving your car into a tight corner. Well, it turns out this is something even good drummers think about a lot. Listen to my friend Joel here describing a chop he invented for that very purpose. But it's an exit route. Yeah. Uh, anytime you're here, you don't have to use the kick, you don't have to cross over. Right. That's the challenge, how do you get out of there? Getting back to the other side of the kit. And recently, I posted something half-baked on Instagram about this. Hey guys, I feel like this is kind of the cheat code. I wasn't completely sure how to put it into words, but now I think I understand better. It was a way to transition away from the low side of the kit if you were doing singles on the lowest toms. But that's only one of the potential scenarios down there. And like a lot of things good drummers just do, even though my friend Joel called it out, a lot of good drummers don't even realize it's a problem. They just play, so not a lot of people are talking about it. But today we will talk about it. We'll shine the bright light of day on this decades long erasure and finally give drummers a way to escape the low side of the kit. Today on 8020, solving the drum chops problem nobody talks about, but a lot of people have. Stay tuned. And dudes, just to let you know, if you're tempted to pull out a quill and some parchment and transcribe this lesson, you do not need to. We've done it for you already. It's not on quill, it's on a PDF. Anyway, all you need to do to get that for free is click the link below the player and tell us where to send it. And now, on with the show. Let's first talk about what it feels like to get stuck down there. Basically, I'd define it as a situation when you either have to hit the crash symbol on the low side of the kit and sort of end the fill, or else cross your hands over and do something fancy. Or else play a double on the floor time when you didn't intend to. Those are all things that can disrupt the flow, right? So I'm going to give you three categories of solution, and you're going to want to stick around because the second of those solutions is the brand new hack I just came up with. So let's go ahead and talk about the first. The second one? The second one? Didn't you go to clickbait school? You're supposed to say the last thing is the thing they need to stick around for. That way they'll watch your whole video and you can just fill it up with filler until you get to the last thing, which is actually something pretty obvious they didn't need to watch the video for. But the second one is really the hack. Besides, there's a reason I'm organizing it this way. Your commitment to making cogent lessons is really interfering with our plans to become the Logan Paul of drums. <laughs> okay, bro. This guy. I'm already the Logan Paul of drums. I'm back. Anyway, category one, snare diddles. Here's what I recommend you practice. And quick reminder that the broad strokes of this will all be transcribed for you. And you can get it for free by clicking below the player. Odd groups on the floor tom, then diddle starting with the left hand on the snare. You can do fives or sevens on the floor tom, then the left half of a double paradiddle on the snare. I'd start out with everything medium soft dynamically and just try to make it all really legato. You can throw in a kick drum before you hit the floor tom. What this little rudiment does is give you a way to receive your hands back to the low side of the kit without crossing over. All those diddles on the snare can be ambiguous length, depending on the phrase you're trying to make. 
As you get comfortable with this, I'd recommend trying some right hand lead stuff down the toms. Then just receiving the hands back to the snare with those dills. You can also start accenting the tom notes and keeping the snare notes soft. This will help you with any scenario where you're doing a down the toms thing and you don't want to hit a cymbal yet. But what about if you want to travel down the toms and actually resolve on something, instead of just kind of petering out on the snare? Something like what Dana Hawkins does here. If you're playing continuous 16ths to 30 seconds down the toms, sometimes you want to hit a strong downbeat that's not the symbol, but which punctuates your phrase. Like exhibit A. Here's that licked when we're doing strategy one and receiving the hands on the snare. And exhibit B. Here's how it would sound if we just hopped in the driver's seat and tied our tom run straight into an accent. And that's what we're gonna talk about now. It's the same thing I alluded to in the Instagram clip. The gist is, instead of hitting the cymbal, you land on the hats and do what's called a bark. I mean, you could also hit the cymbal, but this gives you the option of not hitting the cymbal. Two ways I like to do this. I think it sounds really slick if you catch the hi-hat bark on the upbeat. In situations where you're playing singles with right hand lead on the low tom, it's as simple as catching the last left of the lick on the hats with the bark. Then you can receive the hands on the snare again with singles or gentles. So I'll just repeat that a couple times. And just like any lead hand thing, you can play it down the toms too, and it works equally well. The second category of this type of lick is when you're in a left hand lead situation. This often happens if you begin the phrase with the kick drum, then carry on starting with the left. It's not exactly textbook right hand lead sticking, but it's a way we sometimes fudge it to make things lay more cleanly. That's how I've explained it. Anyway, if you find yourself playing singles down the toms left hand lead, you can just cross over and play that hat bark with the right. All of this switches for people who are lefties and play lefty kits, obviously. It's just mirror image. So let's improvise with these a little. See, that's why I had to put the thing they were gonna improvise with as the second thing, because we couldn't just tell them to improvise with something they didn't know yet. Awfully quiet in here. Oh, sorry, bro. Forgot you were there. I've kind of moved on. Everything isn't always about you, you know? Like, why are you letting me live rent-free in your head? <laughs> this f You're the one who started this! Okay, keep snorting that copium. The voice of Gen Z, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, people. <sighs> Improvisation. So, with everything I show you guys, I like to give you a little improv exercise you can do at home, today. So, let's do it. Here I am playing a little lick that's one of the staples of chopping. Right, left, left kick. Super quick, accent is a nice clean rim shot. Ghost strokes are much quieter in the center of the drum. All the subdivision is consistent. Then you can start to orchestrate around the drums by placing the accent on any tom you want. Got it? Basic, but super quick. Now I'll start with the first type of turnaround lick. I'll do a couple of right left left kicks, then some sixteenths on the floor tom, then receive the hands in the style of our first lick. There are a few shapes you can make, and you can play around with it. For instance, instead of playing all the 16ths on the low tom, now I'm playing down the tom a little. Now, let's try the second category of turnaround, the hi-hat bark. As before, I'm playing some right-left-left kicks around the kit. When I'm ready, I'll play something right-hand lead on the floor tom, then I'll catch the upbeat on the hats with that bark. The snare receives the hands after that, and I play either singles or diddles to recover. Now, I'll play the left hand bark with a run down the toms. Now, the right.
that's how you get the gig. Is that how you get the gig? Maybe. Is that definitive enough for you guys? Anyway, hope you enjoyed this one. I know I did. And am I crazy or am I onto something? Leave a comment below. And one more reminder, if you want a completely free transcription of that, just click the link below the player and tell us where to send it. Do this, Ben. We'll always enjoy these. See you again real soon in another lesson of the week. These drums sound fucking based today. Yamaha, get at me! And that should do it.